graphics card prices are falling and have been for some time. We all know this, but just how far off MSRP actually are we? I think it could be a matter of weeks, not months, and in this video, I'm going to talk you through why. I'll also be looking at what cards are a good deal right now and which cards aren't, because I think May 2022 could actually be a great time to build a gaming PC. Let's do this. Let's kick things off by taking a look at what cards are a good deal and aren't a good deal right now. Also factoring in potential replacements with an RTX 4000 or 5000 series, whatever they call it, release looking pretty imminent for September, October time of this year. Over on Newegg, the cheapest current gen card you can buy comes in for as little as $200 in the form of AMD's RX 6500. But it just so happens that that's the only current gen card you should never consider buying. So let's scroll a little bit further. For those wondering, AMD only gave the card four gigs of VRAM, making it basically useless for any of the latest titles. Headed a little bit further, and there's an MSI RTX 3050 you can actually buy for $329. 329! People commenting on my eight $900 build guides going, yes, but this video's got a $900 graphics card. Evidently not, and it's not the only 3050 on there either. But what's interesting is how AMD stack up. With their RX 6600, this particular card from ASRock, who I've just discovered make graphics cards and motherboards, coming in at 335. $335 for a card that's perfect when gaming at 1080p. As if that wasn't enough, there's another 3050, this time a Gigabyte Eagle OC card for 349. When considering that the 3050's MSRP is not that far under $300, and that cards are never normally available at MSRP anyway, at least not ones that come factory overclocked, like this Gigabyte version, and the value proposition is starting to look really good. I'm expecting cards to come in under $300 on the 3050 lineup within a matter of weeks, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But first, let's keep scrolling down the order and see just what else the likes of Newegg have actually got available to buy right now. I would avoid cards like this near $400 RTX 3050. I think for a 3050, that's too expensive, but that's because it's got a three fan cooler and this is nothing we haven't seen before. Moving further down the order and the RX 6700 XT can here be found for a slither over $500. Now that is still quite expensive for the 6700 XT and it's not necessarily a card I'd recommend you pay that much money for, but to have literally hundreds and hundreds of options that are in stock when it comes to availability is a huge shift from what we've already seen. A 3050 for $350 even is a pretty good buy in my view, as it brings you next gen 1080p gaming performance that could only previously be found with the likes of a 2060 Super, a card you can't really buy right now because Nvidia just don't make them anymore. It's an even better story when you look at Micro Center, who have actually got an RTX 3060 for a slither over $400. This is down $70 over its price point just a couple of weeks ago, and I'd expect these to fall further. It's the same with the RX 6600, which you can find here for $369. An RX 6600 gives you far better performance than something like a 5700 XT from two years ago, but even that card would regularly retail for over $300 USD with a decent cooler. It seems that people are having more luck in physical store locations than they are online, and it's ever to see that stock to the likes of Amazon is yet to return to the levels it once was, but it is getting a lot, lot better. Looking at our data for sites like Newegg and eBuyer here in the UK, where we can see what you guys buy through affiliate links in the description, we're noticing more and more people buy all of the other components for their build, and sometimes GPUs, showing people are having luck finding cards at least somewhere. And this sentiment is shared by Nvidia and AMD themselves. Nvidia's earnings and share price actually went down recently because the competition for GPU has cooled off so much. What's more, returns for crypto mining are so far down right now, no one's really interested. Global crackdowns on the phenomenon have also made a big impact. And further to that point, Ethereum, which is the coin most people are mining, will soon be unminable by GPU, even if they have pushed it back again by a few months. But here's where things get really interesting, as we're going to look at eBuyer here in the UK. Now, if you're in the US, wait, don't go anywhere or any country for that fact. Here in the UK, we've seen the GPU market actually be slightly ahead of a lot of other countries. When other countries have had stock, the UK's had it a few weeks previous. And where the UK has seen a price reduction in GPUs, things have very shortly followed suit over in America, Canada and other territories around the world. 
I've sorted by price low to high on Nvidia GPUs only, A supply of those cards globally seems to be better than AMD. You can now pick up a 1650 for about £170. Okay, alright start, but nothing particularly exciting. Or a 3050 for under 300 And when you account for the fact that this includes our heavy UK sales tax, US prices tend to be one for one, regardless of the exchange rate. And that's why I believe RTX 3050s in just a matter of weeks will start appearing for sub 300 hundred dollar price points. People increasingly waiting out for next gen launches, especially on the higher end, is also starting to ease demand. And we made a video on whether or not you should wait for the next gen cards in the current climate. The short answer is no, you shouldn't, because we don't want to see a repeat of 2020, where everybody waited, new cards came out, and no one could buy them. Because that was not good for anybody. And once again, with the 3060 series, eBuyer shows us a glimmer of hope for the rest of the world, as 3060 12 gigabyte cards come in for four pounds or four hundred dollars if picking up a 3060 for four hundred dollars makes a one thousand dollar build incredibly feasible it makes it completely and entirely doable and i think so many people now are in the mindset that gpus are just simply unaffordable when thankfully that's not quite the case anymore the news is heading in the right direction gpu prices are heading in the right direction but what about high-end cards what if you're shopping for a 3070 or 3080 a gpu that in theory should be available for about five six hundred dollars well i'm glad to report even more positive news here you can pick up a 3070 for just shy of 600 pounds and a 3060 ti with a 120 pound motherboard for 609 now that's another thing to think about regardless of where you are lots of retailers now are doing bundles and that's because as gpu demand becomes more aligned with supply manufacturers like msi asus and gigabyte are thinking hmm how do we get rid of all of these motherboards that we've got in stock and one of the ways they're doing that is starting to bundle them. Now, I'm not saying this is particularly useful for everyone. And in an ideal world, we want standalone GPUs at great prices. But if you know you can sell that motherboard on eBay or something like that for £120 or $100, or you know actually that you could do with a motherboard upgrade, it's not a bad way of picking up, essentially, a motherboard for half price. Because what manufacturers are doing is they're taking some of the profit margin on the GPU and some of the profit margin on the motherboard, and they're sort of sharing the love a little bit, allowing you to get a discount and of course preventing them having loads of stock that simply never sells. And that's the great news that's heading towards gamers, PC builders and enthusiasts alike. With a new Intel GPU launch penned for later this year, Nvidia very likely to drop new cards in September or October, and AMD seeming to be aligned at the same rate, we're going to have lots of new GPUs hitting the market. And with plenty of stock of existing cards, expect to see some quite competitive prices. Now, to be clear, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to pick up a 3060 for $250. It's just not going to happen for, well, ever, I would imagine, given how GPU prices have permanently crept up out the back of the pandemic. And my advice to you is that if you find a GPU for a good price point, as we've blatantly seen from a range of retailers today, then buy it. Just do it and get your gaming PC started. Do it! Just do it! As manufacturers once again bid to compete with each other for market share, as opposed to simply selling as many units as they can produce, price competitiveness will only get better. And with mining seemingly staying away for the foreseeable, things are only looking up for gamers around the world. Just please don't wait for the next generation unless you're looking for one of the highest end cards. In which case, maybe consider the new 3090 Ti, one of the only GPUs that's actually available for MSRP, even if it does cost over $2,000. We're finally getting to a point where I can stand behind this desk and give you prices for the latest GPUs. It makes me so excited and I'm looking forward to how the market continues to ease over the coming weeks, not months. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.